It's a pleasure to open this event. I'm Reg Gibbons. I'm the director of the Center for the Writing Arts, which is the sponsor of this event with additional support from the Office of the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, from the Department of Political Science, Department of English, and Department of African American Studies. Uh, several months ago, Ed Roberson and I were talking informally, and Ed presented the idea of doing something like this, which I found very exciting. And here we are uh, at an occasion which will be historic in itself, and which, because it's being filmed, being videotaped, will be available to anyone in the world uh, through the websites uh, on this campus. Ed Roberson is a very distinguished poet who this quarter is a visiting writer in residence at the Center for the Writing Arts. He's also taught in the MA in Creative Writing in the School of Continuing Studies here and at Columbia College in the last few years. In the winter and spring quarters of this year, he'll be teaching at the University of Chicago. I especially recommend to you his most recent book, City Eclogue, which was published last year. For this occasion, he has assembled a remarkable roundtable that will speak out of experience about the cultural moment made possible by the Civil Rights Movement. As artists, participants, and witnesses, as creators of part of the legacy of the Civil Rights Movement, in print and in politics, in what were new forms of poetry and new connections between art and politics, and between African American art and movements elsewhere for the civil rights and human rights of black people and all people, our guests today, including Ed Roberson himself, are unique representatives of a historic moment. And as I said earlier, are creating today an occasion that is itself historic. Um, Ed? Thanks, Reg, and thank you all for coming. Thank the departments, Northwestern, for allowing us to get this thing off the ground. Um, I'd like to make an opening statement, but before I do that, there's a handout in the back of, of the room there. Um, it's a historiography of the black arts movement, blackness coming at you. Um, this is the work of one of my students who, for some reason or other, took her name off of this. So I'm gonna make her stand up. LaDonna, <laughs> pick up one of these. These are, she's done a good job with this. And put your name on it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, the question always comes up, well, what was the Black Arts Movement? The Black Arts Movement is most succinctly defined in Larry Neal's 1968 essay, The Black Arts Movement, as the aesthetic and spiritual sister of the black power concept. Kalamu Asalam, in his work, Magic of Juju, an appreciation of the black arts movement, points out that the term black power was originally used as a conceptual and political phrase by Richard Wright in the 50s to describe the emergence of independent African nations. The 60s usage, however, originated in 1966 with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. And once adopted in the urban north, it became associated with a certain kind of aggressive advocacy, with militancy, with separation from racist domination, and the pride and assertion of the goodness and the beauty of being black. Harold Cruz, in his Crisis of the Negro Intellectual, proposes that no movement can be successful without the development of a triple front, an economic front, a political front, and a cultural front. The black power advocates regarded the Harlem Renaissance as a failure. And it was a failure because it was only cultural and it was limited in the sense of being only artistic. The, this basis for taking it to the streets has led to the wide dissemination of that unifying black arts movement uh, ideas with artifacts and culture in the communities. Ishmael Reed 
saw the movement as a challenge for cultural sovereignty, the move to gain ownership of your own culture. He says in a 1995 interview, I think what black arts did was inspire a lot of black people to write. However, there would be no cult multiculturalism movement without the black arts movement. Latinos, Asian Americans, and others all say that they began writing as a result of the example in the 1960s. Blacks gave the example that you don't have to assimilate into white culture. You can do your own thing. You can get into your own backyard, get into your own history, your own tradition, and your own culture. He says, I think he ends that saying, with, I think the challenge is for cultural sovereignty and the black arts movement struck a blow for that. Let's end the quote. Another definition, Amiri Baraka, who is the most prominent voice in the, in the movement, offers this other definition. He thinks that the black arts movement was a liberation f of the black masses from both the white and black bourgeois culture. He advocated a separation from the exploitative national interests, which were mainstream white interests, and he called for a readjustment of focus to the self-preservation, self-interest of local communities. He wanted a separate lit literature and a preparation of a new criteria to teach black artists to properly play, appraise black artworks. Baraka has been in the lead in challenging and developing critical categories and challenging stances for a deep critique uh, of, of, of black art. Kilamu Asalam himself has written that the two hallmarks of the movement were the development of black theater groups and black poetry performance and journals closely tied to community organizations and issues. These, he thinks, are alternative to the traditional theaters and venues, both black and white, which are operated almost entirely for commercial gain or for a strictly artistic function. These theaters also blurred, these new theaters, these alternative theaters of the black arts movement, these theaters also blurred the lines between drama, poetry, music, and dance and the visual arts. Aku Marabuti demonstrated his belief that the movement was all about building viable black institutions by leading the growth of the Third World Press into the largest black-owned publishing house in the country. The press originally was one of the very few outlets for black writers and critics. And the last definition I should mention is that of Henry Louis Gates, Jr., who has described the black arts movement as the shortest lived and least successful movement in the history of black art in this country, or something like that. <laughs> Salam shows how diverse the definitions and opinions are of the, of the movement, yet he also points out how restrictively narrow these are, and he notes that because of this, there is underway a revitalization of serious study of the black arts movement and its legacy, and that's what we're here for today, to further that. My position is that the civil rights movement was a catalyst to all the other lines of movement going on in the country at the time. Readjustment was necessary to carry out the social changes made by the end of, de, of de jure uh, segregation. The phases of that adjustment were necessary for the country. Those, those phases were laid out first by the black arts movement as a sequence of liberation of themselves. The steps to becoming a liberated black as differentiated from a Negro Uncle Tom had various names, but they all involved the development of this sequence of consciousness, then identity, then separation by positive differentiation, and then last, independence and self-acceptance -accept within life's plural pluralities. Latinos, Asian Americans, Native Americans, hyphenated Americans, women, gay, lesbians, the handicapped, even white people had to navigate this transition, transition into the present world by this sequence, by this passage. The Black Arts Movement was the first to dive into that water, the first to go through what the country had to go, had to do, had to go through. And that was a disintegrating wormhole that would beam us into the 21st century. And because it was the first, the most differing and the loudest, the Black Arts Movement, upon entry, took on the appearance of the shock troops of the 20th, 21st century. 
The inspiration to me for this, this, this endeavor comes from uh, a paragraph in the essay, I am, I'm a black man, I am, and it's Michael Harper's Black Aesthetic. And it's, this essay is written by Elizabeth Alexander, a poet herself, and it's in her new book, The Black Interior. And let me read you this, this inspiring quote. My fantasy is to put many of the writers from that area, including some, are, some of the dead ones, it is a fantasy after all, on stage to talk together about those important years we call the 60s and tell us who was saying what to whom off the record, who was aligned with whom, what were the goals, what we might now understand as shared, even if at the times the means different, different, differed. I don't yearn for reconciliation per se so much as a more accurate record to understand the actors and their aims and the times, and therefore how we might face today's challenges accompanied by the real insights from the past. Testify, I want, to make yourself a witness here through the old-fashioned means of storytelling, close reading, and literary reconstruction. I had that same fantasy when I read that. And well, Elizabeth, here we are. <laughs> um, not everybody, but it's a start, especially for Chicago, because Chicago was one of the three major sites uh, generate, generating points uh, of the black arts movement, of, of all activity, uh, theater, uh, the um, uh, visual arts, poetry. Um, so what we're doing is we're starting with the locals, which I understand starting with the locals is starting pretty big. It's actually starting pretty much at the top. And what I'm going to do now is introduce you to these big locals. We have, uh, we have uh, four folks here. Uh, we have three poets. We have a novelist. We have a, a playwright. And we have a friend of mine who actually has worked in the community. One of the things <coughs> that uh, I was able to see is a fellow, <coughs> excuse me, person who, who had listened, listened to those ideas, heard people talk. Uh, and then went back and tried it yourself. Uh, so we have three artists and, and one community man. And that's to point out that that narrow definition I said of the, of the black arts movement, they don't take into account that it was not, this was not an academic movement. This is a community movement. So we have a representation from the, a representation from the community. 